This video is going to cover tons of changes coming in the Brawl Stars update, which is happening in the next few days. We got balance changes, new hypercharges, skin costs and animations, monster egg drop rates. Ooh, credits. Oh, we got a mythic. Can be legendary. Oh, mythic. Ah, we got a skin for Edgar. Okay. And we have so much more as well. But let's start with 40 mutations coming to the game. Mutations are unique buffs added to brawlers for a limited time only. Once the Godzilla event is over, mutations will be removed from the game and they will only be active in certain event slots and will be permanently active in the Godzilla City Smash event mode. Also, every single brawler with mutation will have a movement speed boost, but there are 40 unique ones. So let's cover all of them and then we'll talk about how easy it is to unlock them. For Shelly's mutation, her shotgun fires twice with each attack that essentially doubles her damage. Keep in mind that this does also impact her clay pigeons gadget, but it doesn't do anything to her super, just her attack. Now we got more to cover, but first I want to show you 1v1.lol. 1v1 LOL is a hyper battle royale available on mobile and PC, and you can download it for free by clicking below. They're also the sponsor of this video, which makes them extra awesome. Now matches in 1v1.lol are super fast paced and you get immediately into action, making it a great mobile game to play anywhere at any time. Seriously, tons of people are playing this, and because each round is so short, they're completely action packed right from the start all the way to the end of the match. Now, one of my favorite aspects of the game is that you can unlock different characters that each have unique abilities. Additionally, you can unlock different guns and armors that make your character stronger no matter which one you choose to play. Believe me when I say this game is absolutely worth trying out. And I will be exploring the game and keep you updated with my progress as soon as possible. So click that link in the description to download 1v1.lol or find it on mobile in the app stores. And once again, a huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Seriously. Go check it out. Nina's mutation is summoning another Bruce with each super. And yes, her hyper bear star power works with this as well. Keep in mind that she is limited to two bears though. She can't spawn unlimited Bruce's. For Colt's mutation, his basic attacks now destroy the terrain and have a longer range. His attacks actually don't pierce through enemies though, but interestingly enough, they do have a longer range than his super. For Brock's mutation, he fires two rockets side by side with every single attack and both both of them leave flame on the ground as well. El Primo's mutation gives him three perks. He gains an additional 10% health. His super has a faster travel time, making it a lot easier for him to reach enemies before they run away, and his super charges faster than normal. Now, Pocos is interesting because whenever Poco is hit, he heals himself over time. Now, the heal procs for every single hit he takes, so a Colt firing a single attack at Poco could proc six heals, and the healing spreads out to nearby teammates as well. Rose's mutation spawns bushes around her whenever she uses her super, and it is a massive area of bushes, giving her tons of cover. For Tick's mutation, he now spawns two additional heads for every super. You know, just in case one Tick head wasn't annoying enough. And here's a quick sneak peek of how it works with his new hypercharge. As you can see, it's completely busted and absolutely terrifying. Rico's mutation makes him his projectiles bounce more times, and they don't just bounce more. The additional range that they get from every bounce is also increased a lot so that they, his shots can bounce all over the place. This affects both his attack and his super and makes it nearly impossible to dodge his shots. Penny's mutation deploys an additional cannon with her super. It's simple, but two cannons are better than one. Keep in mind that one always spawns higher and one always spawns lower than normal, no matter how you throw it down. Carl's mutation makes his basic attack significantly faster, making it easier to hit enemies, more difficult to dodge, but his movement speed is also increased during his super. Like, insanely fast. He can travel from one side of the map to the other in only one super. It's just nuts. And honestly, it's going to be so much fun to play around with. Next, we have Bo's mutation, and it has two parts. First, his super charge rate is increased, which means that he'll be able to, you know, charge up his super a lot more frequently. But second, he can hide unlimited traps on the map, making the whole map incredibly dangerous. For Stu's mutation, his super is always charged. Like, always. He has unlimited super. He can dash whenever he wants, giving him insane movement. And keep in mind that while using his gas on heal star power, he'll also heal with every single dash. He honestly might be impossible to kill with this. Piper's mutation makes her fire her attack twice. That is right. Every attack is two attacks and uh, could be a lot of damage. For Pam's mutation, she gains unlimited ammo. She will never run out, meaning you can fire it 100% of the time. Just spam that auto aim, right? And her 
her mama's hug will heal her with every projectile too. Frank's mutation gives him three buffs. He can move significantly faster, he has 10% more health, and his basic attacks break walls, which means that no thrower is ever safe. For B's mutation, her basic attacks now also fire a rattled hive gadget projectile. And since she can spam her basic attack, she can spam this as well, making it incredibly hard to avoid for enemies. Grom's mutation is two buffs. His super has four additional projectiles in an X sha shape, making it very hard to dodge. And his super charge rate is also increased, meaning he'll be able to use his super way more frequently. Keep in mind that this doesn't actually increase his super's damage, just how hard it is to avoid. Bonnie's mutation makes it so that while she's inside Clyde, her cannon, Bonnie's basic attack fires two additional projectiles. Additionally, her super stuns opponents when she lands, which is deadly. Surprisingly, without Clyde, she doesn't gain any additional effects. For Gale's mutation, his attacks are now wider. You know, in case it wasn't already easy enough to hit your shots with Gale, now you could just auto-aim with him 100% of the time. Belle's mutation makes her attack split into five projectiles on impact. This doesn't deal any additional damage to the target it hits, but it makes it likely to bounce some shots onto additional enemies, which, if her target is close to, they will then bounce back onto Belle, and vice versa. Also, her projectiles actually don't split if she does not hit an enemy, and they don't split if you hit a wall. Next is Ash's mutation, which spawns more little helpers. Now, if all of them detonate on an enemy, he will easily fill up his rage bar as well as fully recharge his super. For Lola's mutation, she spawns an additional ego with her super. Only one of her ego will be affected by her gadgets, but she gets the healing from both of them with her second star power. For Manny's mutation, she shoots two additional projectiles with her super. That's two extra projectiles fired on both sides of the original super at a diagonal angle, but if you're close enough to an enemy, you can hit them with all three. Hank's mutation automatically triggers his super projectiles whenever he's damaged. This is every separate instance of damage, so it could be a constant flow of fish torpedoes fired against an amber. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. Next is Angelo's, and this adds two additional projectiles to his basic attacks. These extra projectiles are also spread out like a fan shape, and they do deal poison damage from his super, and you can hit enemies with all three shots right next to them. Max's mutation is unlimited ammo. This one is very self explanatory, but I do need to remind you not to use her second star power with this since it's completely useless. She already has unlimited ammo. She doesn't need to reload it any faster. Sprout's mutation makes it throw an additional projectile with every attack. Now, the second projectile follows right behind the first and lands in about the same shot, and Sprout's first star power actually only affects the first projectile, not the second. Next is Squeak's mutation, and it makes his big blob now spawn sticky bloms, and he has an increased supercharge rate. These sticky bloms are just as big as his main attacks, but they only deal as much damage as his super normally would. That being said, only four of them have to hit in order for Squeak to fully recharge his super and toss another. Squeak's mutation is very similar to Rico's. It's extra bounces and extra range, but I swear the bounces on roughs lead to an even further range than Rico's. It's even longer than a BB super bouncing around. The range is absolutely insane. Buzz's mutation makes his super have an even longer range, like a lot longer. I can't exactly measure it out, and it definitely doesn't reach across the entire map but you can pretty much use it whenever on most maps and you're gonna hit at least a wall somewhere. For Eve's mutation, she spawns two hatchlings every time she gets damaged. Now this is stronger against enemies who, who fire tons of projectiles that deal little bits of damage like Jean or Tick or, you know, Colt if you want to spawn a ton of little hatchlings. Janet's mutation makes her drop even more bombs during her super. And when I say more bombs, I mean a lot more bombs. This is actually insane and she will be able to charge her super a bit faster as well. Gray's mutation allows him to have six active dimensional doors at a time. That's two doors per super for a total of three active supers. Additionally, Gray could have a four super charged up and ready to go just in case you want to travel a ridiculous distance in just a few seconds. Melody's mutation allows her to have two additional notes orbiting her and the notes will last a lot longer time, like significantly longer. And this is actually so fun for Melody, especially because both her gadgets and her star powers get benefits from this as well. For Spike's mutation, his attack split out into even more spikes, like twice as many. And that's right, his attack just became impossible to dodge. And against a large target, he can deal over 11,000 damage with every ammo. And yes, his curveball star power does get affected by this too, which is just insane. For Crow's mutation, his attack projectiles now return to him. And yes, they deal damage to enemies both ways. This has the added benefit of piercing through enemies and dealing damage to multiple targets as well. For Leon's mutation, he spawns two 
two clones every time he uses his super. And yes, you can use his gadget to spawn a third clone as well. Now the clones are still easy to tell apart from an actual player, right? But they could be super useful in blocking some shots. And you never know when some people are just not gonna pay attention and attack them anyway. Meg's mutation gives two additional projectiles for every single one that she normally fires. So her damage potential is actually tripled and it is basically impossible to avoid her attacks as long as she aims halfway decent. Also, outside of her mecha, she gets an additional projectile to help her recharge her super with each attack as well. For Surge's mutation, he reaches max level with just one super. That's right, he goes from upgrade zero to max upgrade. And to help him get that upgrade, he also gets an increased supercharge rate, so he can just charge up his super in three hits, which is great for Surge. Now let's talk about how to get mutations and cover drop rates in Monster Eggs. Mutations will drop from Monster Eggs, and you'll get Monster Eggs from playing the new City Smash event. You'll also earn up to two Monster Eggs for playing your daily wins as well. Just remember that mutations are only temporary and will be removed from the game after the god Godzilla event is over. Now, as for drop rates, the good news is that it's actually super easy to get mutations from monster eggs. There's a 50% chance you'll get a mutation from rares, super rares, and epic monster eggs. And the other 50% of the time, you'll get coins, power points, blings, or cosmetics. Now, mythic monster eggs will give you rare or super rare skins, and legendary monster eggs are where you will get epic skins, a possibility of a legendary skin, or up to three hypercharged skins. And that's right, guys. There is a small chance that you'll get Robo Mike, a legendary skin for free in a legendary monster egg. This is actually an insane chance for free-to-play players to get a legendary skin even if the chances are pretty slim, that's pretty awesome. Now, I don't know for sure how easy it will be to unlock all the mutations for free. All we know is that you'll be able to get up to six every few days. With that being said, I was able to unlock all of them in about 96 eggs. That's actually a pretty great drop rate, and you're guaranteed to get a good collection of them as long as you're actively playing every single day. Okay, now let's cover the six new hypercharges coming to the game, and then we'll talk about balance changes. Brock's hypercharge is Rocket Barrage. This makes his super fire a ton of of rockets in four waves dealing massive damage along the way. Now this hypercharge looks a lot more scary than it actually is. Believe me, it's scary, but this is a damage comparison between a regular super and a hypercharged super from Brock. The hypercharged super only does about 3000 more damage than a regular super, but Keep in mind that Brock's super normally gives enemies a lot of time to run away, whereas his hypercharged super is going to deal damage a lot more consistently because there's not as much time to escape. Gene's hypercharge is Hyper Hands. This fires three hands for his super instead of just one. Up to a certain range, around five tiles, this makes it impossible to miss his super, which is actually pretty awesome. And even further out, it's still gonna be much more difficult to dodge his super. But the coolest part is that each hand can pull an enemy to your side of the map, which will be really fun. Max's hypercharge is unlimited energy. When Max activates her hypercharge super, she throws an energy drink towards her team members. Now, if her team members are moving around, it doesn't matter. Even if the drink doesn't land on top of the brawler, they still get the buff. This increases their movement speed considerably, even if they aren't right next to Max when she activates it. What's really crazy is the fact that it lasts almost three times as long as her typical speed boost from her super, which I can only assume is going to get nerfed because that's insane. Also, teammates will get 25% of their super charged as soon as the energy drink hits them. And keep in mind that Max actually doesn't get 25% of her own super charge though. Nita's hypercharge is hyper bearing. A hypercharged bear will have 20% additional health and 15% more movement speed. As you can see here, a brawler with normal movement speed will struggle to run away from the bear unless they are directly running in the opposite direction, meaning that attacking the 10,000 health bear is likely going to be more efficient than just running away from it. Danny's hypercharge is Swift Winds. This hypercharge gives himself and his teammates a 25% faster movement speed while inside the sandstorm. This is a massive advantage in my opinion, and if it isn't strong enough, it's also going to silence enemies for half a second when it lands. This silence is half the duration of Cordelius's poison mushroom gadget, and it might not seem like a lot, but it's actually pretty strong. Tick's hypercharge is headstrong. This does three things for Tick's super. First of all, his super is deployed faster, giving enemies less time to attack it before it starts chasing them. It also gives Tick's head a massive speed buff, making it way harder to run away from. Additionally, 
Once it explodes, it leaves six mines behind. Now, there's plenty of time to run away from the explosion before the mines actually land, but keep in mind that the mines each deal 4,000 damage, which is just as much as a super, so do not walk into them. Now, let's talk about balance changes coming to the game, and then we'll talk about all the skins. Gus is getting a pretty sizable buff to his super. When he activates his super, it now knocks enemies back up to three tiles away. This is actually pretty huge for countering assassins that get a little bit too close to him. Keep in mind that the knockback also works if he uses his super to shield a teammate. So this could lead to some pretty awesome brawl ball plays if used correctly. Mr. P is getting two buffs to his super. The spawn's movement speed is getting a 20% buff, making them even more annoying to run away from. Additionally, the HP his spawner base has is increasing by 13%. This is gonna make it just a bit more annoying to get rid of. Mortis is getting two buffs. His attack damage is increasing by 6%. This means that he'll now be able to take out 28 of the 78 brawlers in the game with one less ammo compared to before. The most significant change is that brawlers with 6,000 HP at max level will now be three shot instead of four shot. So Mortis will be much stronger against Angelo, Eve, Grom, Jesse, and six other brawlers. Now his combo spinner gadget is getting this same damage buff since its damage is the same as Mortis's attack. Willow is getting a buff to both her star powers. Her obsession star power increases hexed enemies movement speed and that speed buff is increasing from 25% faster to 33% faster. Additionally, her Love is Blind star power reduces poisoned enemies' reload speeds, and that reload speed debuff is increasing from 25% slower reload speed to 30% slower reload speed. Barley is getting a 5% overall damage buff to both his attack and his super. This is going to allow Barley to take out 26 of the 78 brawlers with one less tick of damage. That's not a huge impact, but it should hopefully be enough to help Barley compete with newer throwers like Willow and Grom. Then it kind of just pushed him out of the meta. Rosa is getting a buff to how quickly her hypercharge charges. It will now charge 25% faster, which should make it a little bit easier for her to use her hypercharge more frequently. Janet's getting a massive 33% buff to her super's damage. At max level, the damage of a rocket is increasing from 1,200 damage to 1,600 damage. Now a 33% damage buff sounds insane, but I actually think it's pretty reasonable on Janet since her rockets don't really hit very frequently. Angelo is getting a massive nerf to his super's damage, not the actual super, but the poison damage from the arrows fired while he is in his super. The damage is being nerfed by 50%. It's still going to do a lot of damage in my opinion, but it won't be quite as overwhelming as it was. Charlie is getting two nerfs. First of all, the rate at which she charges her super is decreasing by 17%. Instead of charging her super in six hits, she'll now charge it in seven hits. So she'll have her super less frequently. Additionally, her attack range is being nerfed by 7%. It's decreasing by two thirds of a tile so she won't quite have the same range as before. Piper is getting a nerf to her minimum damage. Her minimum damage is decreasing from 982 damage at max level down to 888. Almost 100 less damage, which will make it a bit harder for her to deal with brawlers up close. Nani's getting an 8% nerf to her attack damage. She'll now require one additional ammo to take out 16 brawlers. Most significantly, she'll no longer be able to one-shot low HP brawlers like Piper, Crow, Barley, or B, along with a few others. She'll now require three ammo to take out some of the tankier brawlers as well, like BB, Bonnie, and Buzz, along with a few others. Cordelius is getting two nerfs. First is a 4% nerf to his attack damage. This isn't a big nerf and only changes interactions with three brawlers, but it will have a slight impact when paired with his second nerf. His attacks will now charge his super 16% less effectively, though the charging from enemies standing close to him isn't getting changed at all. Spike is getting two nerfs <laughs> after being in the S tier for several years. Uh, first is a 4% nerf to his attack damage. Not a huge nerf, but it's better than nothing, I guess. He'll now require one additional spike to take out 20 of the 78 brawlers in the game. That's one additional spike, not necessarily one additional ammo, since his ammo is kind of weird sometimes. Also, his popping pin cushion gadget is getting the same 4% damage nerf. Bell is getting a nerf to her hypercharge charging rate. It will now charge 20% less effectively, which means she's going to have her hypercharge charged a lot less frequently. Melody is getting two nerfs. First is her interlude gadget. The shield per note is getting decreased from 15% to 10%, which will significantly decrease the maximum shielding power of her gadget. Additionally, her fast beats star power is decreasing from 
8% more movement speed per note down to 6% more movement speed per note. I still think both these abilities will be my go-to abilities for Melody, but it's nice to see her tone down a bit. Crow's Hypercharge is getting a decent buff. The daggers from his Hypercharge Super will now properly return to him after hitting a wall. This should make him deal damage a little bit more consistently when using his Hypercharge Super. Kit is getting two buffs and one nerf. The nerf is to his cardboard box gadgets invisibility duration. It is decreasing from five seconds of invisibility down to only three seconds, which honestly is way more reasonable for a gadget. But Kit's attack damage is getting a 25% buff. At max level, it's increasing from 1,600 damage up to 2,000 damage. And this is a massive damage buff, but keep in mind that it's still not nearly as much damage as when he was first released. He'll now require one less ammo to take out 62 of the 78 brawlers in the game. And most significantly, brawlers with 5,200 HP to 5,800 HP like Dynamite, Bell, and Eve will now be three shot by Kit. The second buff to Kit is the same damage buff to his super damage. This should make Kit feel a bit more legendary than he did last season. RT's inline gadget is getting replaced with his out of line gadget. Activating it will instantly charge his super so he can use it to split into two, or if he's already split, he can use it to reattach into just one brawler. Hank is getting a buff and a nerf. First is a buff to his super. When he activates it, he will now now heal 50% of his missing HP. I like this because while his super deals a lot of damage, it's not particularly useful in most situations. However, Hank's total HP is getting a 7% nerf. At max level, it's decreasing from 11.6 thousand health to 10.8 thousand health. He's still tanky, just not quite as much. Chuck is getting what I consider to be a buff. He can now choose to put down a post when he's within range of his post by manually aiming it. So if he's close to a post already, you can tap the super to dash or manually aim to place down another one. Okay, now we have all the new skins coming to the game, including their animations, their costs, as well as any color variations coming to the game. First up, we have a new skin rarity. In addition to everything that legendary skins have, hypercharge skins also include a special model transformation while having a hypercharge active. As such, they are more rare than legendary skins. The Godzilla Buzz skin is the first hypercharged skin and there are two ways to unlock it. First of all, there is a slim chance you'll get it from monster eggs. And second, you need to be in a club that completes the Godzilla event. If your club does complete the Godzilla event, everyone in the club will get the skin for free. But if you don't unlock it that way, your options are to buy monster eggs and hope you get the skin. If you happen to buy all of the monster egg offers in the shop and still don't get the skin, don't worry, a pity offer will appear in the shop so you can buy the skin and then you will have collected a bunch of resources and progression from monster eggs or, you know, mutations. I don't know, we'll see how this goes. But Godzilla Buzz also has a red and black skin color variation and honestly, red is my favorite. This is his attack. This is his super. This is his kill effect. This is his hypercharge effect. This is his winning animation. And this is his losing animation. Next is Super Ranger Brock and each of them will cost 149 gems. This includes red, blue, yellow, pink, and black but they'll also be available in monster eggs potentially to get unlocked for free. This is his attack. This is his super. This is his winning animation. And this is what it looks like when he loses. Scarlet Paladin Surge is an epic skin that will be unlockable from Monster Eggs. It's a recolor of Mecha Paladin Surge, which is no longer available. Mecha Tick Ghidorah is the Godzilla season skin in the Brawl Pass. Buying the Brawl Pass Plus will get you the dark and the light color variations as well. This is his attack. This is his super. This is his winning animation. And this is his losing animation. Mothra Eve is the ranked skin for the Godzilla season. So you can get her from ranked star drops or eventually you'll be able to buy her for 149 gems later on. This is her attack. This is her super. This is her winning animation. And this is her losing animation. 
Godzilla Nita is a mythic skin and will cost 149 gems. This is her attack. This is her super. Here's her winning animation. And this is what it looks like when she loses. Next, we have the Cyber Brawl skin, starting with Hacker Brock. He's the Cyber Season skin in the Brawl Pass, and buying the Brawl Pass Plus will get you the Master Hacker and RGB Hacker Brock color variations. This is his attack animation. This is what his super looks like. Here's his winning animation. And here's his losing animation. Glitch Larry and Laurie is the ranked skin for the Cyber Season, so you can get them from ranked star drops or buy them for 149 gems later on. This is their attack. This is their super. This is their winning animation. And this is their losing animation. B Bite is a super rare skin and will cost 79 gems. This is her attack. This is her super. This is her winning animation. And this is her losing animation. Fangard is a mythic skin and will cost 199 gems. This is his attack. This is his super. This is his winning animation. And here's his losing animation. Virus Charlie is a legendary skin and will cost 299 gems and come with all the legendary skin features. This is her attack. This is her super. This is her kill effect. This is her winning animation. And this is her losing animation. Urban Ninja Terra is a variation of Street Ninja Terra, which is no longer available for, for purchase, but she actually has her own custom effects and is fairly different. She's an epic skin and will cost 149 gems. This is her attack. This is her super. This is her winning animation. And here is her losing animation. Gamer BB is a variation of Heroin BB, which is no longer available for purchase, but Gamer BB actually has her own custom effects. She is a mythic skin and will cost 199 gems. This is her attack. This is her super. This is her winning animation. And here's her losing animation. Beach Byron is a rare skin and will cost 29 gems. As a rare skin, he does not have any special effects. Gallimortis is also a rare skin and will cost 29 gems. Parasol Frank is a rare skin as well and will cost 29 gems. Squad Buster Shelly is a mythic skin and will cost 199 gems. I imagine she'll release with Supercell's newest game, Squad Busters, coming to beta later this week. This is her attack. Here's her super. This is what it looks like when she wins. And this is her losing animation. Dark Samurai Jean is an epic skin and will cost 149 gems. This is his attack. This is his super. This is his winning animation. And this is his losing animation. Nightmare Sandy is an epic skin as well and will cost 149 gems. This is his attack. Here's his super. This is his winning animation. And this is his losing animation. Now the following skins are color variations of old Power League skins that are no longer available to be unlocked. They will be available in ranked star drops and can eventually be purchased for 149 gems. Byron the White, Rusho Nita, Wavehopper Jackie, Filmmaker Buzz, Moon Cursor Penny, 
and piano a bit. That is a ton of stuff coming to the game, but we still haven't covered the two new brawlers. I'll be releasing sneak peeks on Lily and Draco in an upcoming video, so subscribe for it. And until that happens, make sure you check this one out because I think uh, I think you'll like it. And don't forget to use code Kairos in the Brawl Star Shop. K A I R O S code Kairos in the Brawl Star Shop. Free mutations from your monster eggs. I don't know, guys.